you just got a brand new M5 iPad Pro, and it is one of Apple's best hardware products out right now. But if you're using your iPad Pro right out of the box, you are missing out on some game-changing features, some customization options, some settings you should enable, and some really powerful tools that level up your iPad experience. So here are my first 20 things to do on your new iPad Pro, or really, any iPad that's running iPad OS 26. And let's start that off with something you need to change immediately on your iPad Pro to get more display space. So to do this, we're going to open up settings, then we're going to select display and brightness, and then we are going to select display zoom and change this to the more space setting. Now this adjusts the iPad's display zoom, making the interface elements appear smaller and less zoomed in, which lets you take better advantage of the limited display space on your iPad, especially if you are using that new windowed multitasking mode. Speaking of that multitasking mode, during setup, Apple will actually ask you which mode you want to use, whether that is the classic full screen iPad apps mode or the new windowed apps mode. However, depending on your preference, you can still change this at any time, as well as get back to the old stage manager setting, which also kind of gets a new upgrade. So to do this, let's go to settings, Let's go to multitasking and gestures. And from here, you can pick between all three windowed modes. Now I prefer this new windowed apps mode, which gives you a much better multitasking experience, but it's entirely up to you to select which mode you like the most. Now this is an entirely new feature on iPadOS, so let's learn some useful controls. First of all, you can now resize windows simply by dragging the sides, bottom, top, or corner of an app window. Secondly, you now have classic macOS traffic light controls on the top left of every window. Now, they look really small, but all you have to do is tap on them to expand these controls. Then the red button will close an app, the yellow button will minimize it, and the green one will expand it back into a full screen view. Now, there's also some other hidden window management features here. For example, if you long press on the green button, you can now see quick options to resize and move windows into various tiled views, including a quad view, and one of my favorites to use on an iPad, a three window view. You also need to learn the new gestures that come with this windowed mode. So one of those is flick to tile. So just grab a window, drag it to the left or right side really quickly and it will snap into place. And you can do this with two apps giving you a nice side-by-side -side view of both applications. And then you can drag the middle to easily resize them. Another new thing you need to learn is that each iPad app now has a full blown menu bar, but it's a little bit hidden, especially if you don't have the keyboard case. So to see the menu bar without the keyboard case, just swipe down from the top of the display and you will see a Mac OS style menu bar where you can find various quick actions for these apps. If you have the keyboard case or a mouse, uh, just simply drag the cursor to the top of the display when you're in an app and it will reveal that menu bar. Now, with the full windowed multitasking system on iPadOS 26, it does remove the simplicity of the iPad and it's very easy to start accumulating a lot of cluttered windows. So you should also learn how to use the app expose feature to make it easier to manage all of these windows. To access this without a keyboard when you have your apps open, simply swipe up from the bottom of the display, stop about like one fourth of the way there and you'll see this animation play out and then just remove your finger and you can select from all of your open apps in this nice, neatly arranged view. When using a trackpad, just swipe up with your three fingers to enter that same mode. Okay, let's go back into settings and enable some other features. Now, with a brand new iPad, you're probably going to be downloading a lot of apps, but I hate when my home screen gets cluttered, so I prefer to have my apps go right into the app library. To do this, go to settings, then go to home screen and app library, and there, check the box labeled app library. Now, whenever you download a new app, instead of just going to your home screen and cluttering it up and filling it up with all these unorganized pages, it will then just download into your app library and automatically be categorized. And you can then just look at all your apps there. Or if you wanna add it back to the home screen, you can always just drag and drop it from the app library. And while we're at it, another thing you should do is upgrade your iPad's display with this, the new Paperlike 3 screen protector. Now, if you're like me, you hate installing screen protectors because it's always so hard to align everything and get all the dust and air bubbles out. But my favorite thing about the new Paperlike is they made a new butterfly application installation method that makes applying the Paperlike cleaner, easier, 
and more reliable, assuring proper alignment, no dust, and no annoying air bubbles. It even has a complete step-by-step -step video that you can find on the QR code right on the screen protector, and it's very easy to follow along with crystal clear instructions and a well-detailed video. And with the addition of the multi-purpose helper tool, the process is easier than ever. And after a few short minutes, you now have a tactile screen covered with Paperlike's Nano Dot technology. I've used every version of the Paperlike, and this is by far the best version that they have made. It actually looks like it's part of your iPad's display and it adds a beautiful matte finish with texture that feels better than the super slippery glossy display that your iPad comes with. And yes, if you are an Apple Pencil user, those tiny nano dots create friction between the Apple Pencil tip and the display that makes it feel and sound like writing on actual paper. So this is a must have upgrade for note takers and artists. So to upgrade your iPad Pro or any iPad, check out the link in the description and pick up your own Paperlike. And thank you to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Next, let's do some customization on your iPad's home screen. To do this, we're going to long press on the home screen. You're going to see an edit button pop up in the top left, just tap that, then tap on customize. From here, you're going to see that you have a few different options. So you have a dark mode, which turns all the app icons dark. You have a clear mode, which turns them all clear. You can also set these to auto uh, mode, so it changes between light and dark depending on the time of day. And you also have a tinted mode, where you can actually change the color of all of your apps. You get like these cool little sliders where you can quickly change the color. And you also get uh, a button right here, which is like the photo icon. This actually changes the apps to kind of match the background or your wallpaper. And then you also get this eyedropper tool, which is a color picker tool. If you pick that, you can basically select anywhere on your wallpaper and that will kind of match the icons to that specific section that you chose. Uh, from here, you also have another button right here. It's like a big square. If you tap that, that'll actually make all the apps bigger and remove the names from under the app. So this is good if you kind of know uh, app icons really well and you just want like a very minimalist home screen. Another thing you're gonna wanna customize is your lock screen. So to do this, go to your lock screen then long press on the lock screen, then tap the customize button on the bottom. Now, one of the things I love about the iPad's larger display compared to an iPhone is that you can add a lot more widgets onto your lock screen. And you can see there is a whole section here where you can add widgets. So just tap on this, you'll see all the widgets pop up and then you can pick from your favorites and you can add a lot of them on your iPad's display. So this is really useful to see information at a glance right on your lock screen and you don't actually have to go into the app or even go onto the uh, home screen of the iPad to view widgets there. Once you're done adding your favorite widgets, you can also make the clock bigger on uh, iPad OS 26. Just drag the clock and look at that. You can make it really big. On the top, you can also uh, change the widget there. So it's by default set to the date, which I like, but if you want the weather or another widget, you can change that too. And then uh, after that, another thing you're gonna wanna do is actually maybe add your own spatial wallpaper. So let's go back to the lock screen or just long press on the lock screen again, and then swipe over to you get this new section to add a new wallpaper. And we are going to select one of our favorite photos. So try and pick a photo that looks like it has some depth, like some separation between the foreground and the background, because I don't think the spatial icon always pops up on every wallpaper, but when you pick a photo that does have depth, uh, you'll see that there's this new icon in the bottom right. And if you tap that, it's actually going to generate a spatial photo, which, which is basically a 3D photo on your lock screen. And if you move your iPad around, you actually see that like the photo moves along with you. It's like a really cool effect. Like it, it really looks like it's 3D. And this is also available on the iPhone, but I find that on the iPad's giant display, this 3D effect is even better. And bonus tip, you can also change photos in the Photos app into a spatial photo. Again, provided that that spatial photo symbol pops up. Okay, so if you bought this new iPad Pro, you probably spent a lot of money on it. So let me show you something you should change in your battery settings to let it age more gracefully. So to do this, we are going to go to settings, then we are going to tap on battery. And while we're here, uh, you should actually enable the battery percentage so you can actually see the exact number that your battery is at rather than just relying on the symbol, which is sometimes a little hard to read. So you can see the exact battery life, right? But then after that, you're going to want to tap on battery health 
and you're going to see an option here for 80% limit. Now, now you might be asking, why should I put it at this 80% limit? Well, as most of you know, batteries do age. So as you use a device for a long period of time, you keep charging it, the battery ages and the battery life gets worse. Well, basically a oversimplified version of this is that when you charge a battery to 100%, it actually ages the battery more. So if you set it to an 80% limit, every time you charge your iPad, if you cut it off at that 80%, it basically just means that your battery won't age as quickly because you're not constantly putting it to the maximum capacity. So basically set it to 80%, it'll keep your iPad's battery healthy for longer at the maximum capacity. I think that's pretty simple. Okay, let me give you a few tips for your iPad's virtual keyboard. So first of all, did you know that when you long press on the space bar, you actually activate a trackpad for the cursor. So you can just move your finger around and you move the text insertion tool around. Now, if you actually tap the keyboard again while in this mode, you can actually select text, which is really cool and very handy. Another cool thing you can do with this keyboard is instead of hitting shift to get to like these alternative keys, you can actually just swipe down on the key to type that character, which I find to be a really big time saver. Finally, you can also shrink the iPad keyboard and change it to a small floating window by just pinching the keyboard. Then you can move the keyboard wherever you want and uh, when in this mode, you can type normally like you would on like your iPhone, or I find it's easier to actually just swipe to type when it's in this very small keyboard mode. And if you wanna resize the keyboard to be full size again, again, just take your two fingers and I guess pinch outwards. It's not pinching, I guess you pinch outwards like that. Now being on an iPad doesn't give you as much freedom as using a Mac, although it is getting better. For example, if you go into settings and then apps, you can actually select default apps that aren't Apple's built-in ones for a few categories, like your email app, your messaging app, your calling app, and your preferred web browser. Okay, this next section is for Apple Pencil users. So if you're not an Apple Pencil user, you can skip or you can watch, maybe it'll make you buy an Apple Pencil. So let's first go into settings and then let's select Apple Pencil. And from here, you can see there's quite a few settings you can change. Personally, I recommend turning on the only draw with Apple Pencil setting, which completely disables the ability to draw with your fingers. With this left off, sometimes when you're drawing or writing and then you go to like scroll, it will write with your fingers instead, which I find super annoying. So I usually turn this on. Next, you should also change the squeeze and double tap gesture to what you use most often. So by default, the squeeze gesture will show the tool palette, but you can switch it between a few different things. And you can even set it to an app shortcut, which means you can really customize this specific gesture to pretty much do anything you want, even things that aren't Apple Pencil related. So as a power user, that might be a useful feature. There's a bunch of shortcuts and you can even make your own, so I'm not gonna go through which one you should set it to, but yeah, that's something you can do, right? Uh, then there's the double tap feature, which has less options, but again, you should go through this and see which uh, feature you want set to double tap. So by default, it's set to switch between the current tool and the eraser, but maybe you wanna switch that to switch between the current tool and the last used tool or any of these other uh, options you have. Finally, don't forget these handy Apple Pencil gestures. First of all, if you take your Apple Pencil and drag up from the bottom left of the screen, you will quickly take a screenshot. That's really fast, right? Uh, and then if you drag it to the bottom right area, well, then you can actually pop up a quick note. Again, a really fast way to get into notes. In the Apple Pencil settings, if you scroll to the bottom, you can actually change this setting to be the reverse if you want it that way, or you can completely turn off this feature, which I don't know why you would, it's actually pretty helpful. Okay, these settings are for anyone who uses a mouse or Apple's Magic Keyboard case with their new iPad Pro. Now, you may have noticed that iPad OS 26 has a redesigned cursor, and for the most part, I like it, but I do think it has one big problem, and that is unlike the Mac cursor, which is very high contrast, uh, I find that the slightly translucent design makes it easy to lose sight of where it is. Now, yes, if you swipe on the trackpad really fast or shake your mouse, you will see that the icon just grows giant and you can find it very easily. But again, I still kind of just like lose track of it when I'm using it. So I prefer to enable this setting. So let's go to settings, then go to accessibility, and then scroll down to pointer control. And at the top, there's just a simple toggle to increase the contrast of the cursor, which I think makes it stand out and pop a lot more on your display. And I like that. 
If you really want the cursor to stand out, you can even go to the color settings and give the cursor a border color, which is, yeah, it, you're not losing sight of that. But I personally find that the increased contrast does the trick for me. And I find that the color setting is a little too much. So I leave that setting off, but it's totally up to you. Finally, the iPad in general just feels a lot more capable with all these new software features. So you may be using the Files app a lot more than you did before. And a good way to stay organized is to customize your folders. So let's go into the Files app. Let's select a folder. If you don't have any folders, you can just tap the new folder button right there. Then either long press on the folder or you can right click it as well. Uh, and then hit customize folders and tags. From here, you can change the tag on top or add a new tag. And these are color coded. So the color of your tag will actually change the color of your folder icon. Additionally, you can select from some symbols to put right on the folder, or you can pick from the emoji list to make these folders more distinct and recognizable at a glance. And they just add some personality and fun, which I, you know, we're all about personality and fun here, right? Like I'm a fun guy. All right, but those are the first things you should do and learn on your new M5 iPad Pro. Now, I really hope this video was helpful. Like, I hope you learned something new. And if you did, please leave me a like. If you wanna see more, make sure you're subscribed. And thank you so much for watching. You didn't have to watch this whole video. That's, that's a big use of your time. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.